Hey guys, I'm the Jane here. I thought I'd do something different and make a video actually about uh, motorcycles. Well, motorcycles, scooters, uh, and cars. Um, topic of this video is driving while impaired. I recently had to drive, uh, I had to go somewhere while impaired, and the question was, do I take the car or do I take the motorcycle? Uh, not only was I impaired, but I had some uh, valuable cargo with me as well. I, I, I was taking my computer to get it fixed. <laughs> just helping my dog up. She's getting old. She, she usually just jumps after we reach down and help with my hand. Anyways, so yeah, so am I admitting to uh, driving slash riding drunk? Uh, no, I'm not. I, I was I was very very tired at the time. Like I, I hadn't slept the night before, and maybe the night before that I'd only gotten a couple. Of, like I was ridiculously tired, and I knew that uh, I shouldn't be riding or driving, but uh, I I had to. I know that sounds like a lame excuse, but you know technically technically it was legal. There, there's no. There's no way to test for tiredness, but the but the odd, you know the ironic thing is that um, they've done testing and there's no difference between driving drunk and driving tired. Like they did, they did, yeah. So they're pretty much the same thing. But anyways, it of course it depends on how much alcohol and how tired you are. But yeah. Um, so and and here's the interesting thing. So I I I, I needed to. Uh, take my computer somewhere and I knew that I was tired to the point where it was unsafe for me to uh, operate a motor vehicle and I yeah so most people would guess I would choose the car because that's a lot safer for me but in actuality I went with the motorcycle and my reasoning was and, and for me I, I think it's valid uh, it's so much easier to drive a scooter or a motorcycle than it is a car. In the sense that when I'm on a, a, a scooter like this, I, like I don't have any blind spots. I can see what's around me completely. Uh, I can fit through narrow, narrow gaps, which is a centimeter on either side. And I can do it with confidence because I can see how wide my vehicle is. Like the widest point on a motorcycle or scooter is generally the handlebar. So if the handlebars can fit, the rest of the bike can fit. And I can see, I can reach out and touch. Um, but with a car, especially in Taiwan, because in Taiwan you have so many scooters on the road and so and crazy traffic and whatnot, when you're in a car in Taiwan, you don't have as much uh, awareness of the space around you because you have blind spots and you can't tell exactly. Uh, you're not as able to be able to fit into small spots. And in a car, you, uh, here's another way of putting it: when I'm driving my car in Taiwan, I have to be like hyper alert that I so that I don't kill someone else like I don't run some scooter off the road or if I want to make a turn if, in a car in Taiwan you can't be just driving along and be like oh shit this is my turn and then turn right you can't do that because there's a really high chance that you have a scooter next to you in your blind spot so you have to you have to yeah it takes you have to be extra aware in Taiwan to drive a car. And I, I always, I, I, I've been saying that for a long time too, because people would see my videos where I'm riding a motorcycle fast, and I'm speeding, and I'm flying through traffic, and they're like, you're going to kill someone, you're going to kill someone. I'm like, dude, me doing twice the speed limit on a motorcycle, I still have less of a chance of killing someone else as you doing the speed limit in a car. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Someone doing the speed limit in a car is still more likely to kill someone else than someone speeding on a motorcycle. Someone speeding on a motorcycle obviously has a much higher chance of hurting themselves, but that's their choice. The chance of hurting someone else uh, is, is it's always going to be higher in a car. Because, yeah, you get people... I've, I've seen people in cars doing half the speed limit and kill people. Because it's a car. It's... 3,000 pounds of steel that, that can very easily kill someone else and on a scooter or a motorcycle you got to be pretty uh, unlucky to uh, hurt someone else. Oh, we, got a, we have a red light here so let's just turn around and head over half a block where there is no uh, control lights <laughs> and then pop 
out there. Because there was a 90 second timer on that red light. So yeah, I find I find the math of it and everything somewhat interesting. So when people would, not so much recently, but uh, when I first started YouTube, I had a lot of people criticizing uh, this me for the speed which with which I ro I rode and said how especially how dangerous it was how dangerous it was and I'm like every single car on this road in front of me that's that's just going along doing the speed limit has a higher chance of killing someone than me on my scooter speeding. Uh, yeah, killing someone else. I they're of course much safer in their cars. But yeah, so it was it was just interesting. It was interesting to me because I was like. My girlfriend said to me, <coughs> she knew I was really tired and I, and I had to go somewhere, so she said to me, like, take the car, it's safer. And I'm like, yeah, it's safer for me, but it's much more dangerous for everyone other than me. <laughs> so, with that in mind, I took the scooter. And plus, the scooter needs less concentration, and in my uh, impaired state, I had less concentration, I had less, like, functionality of my brain so it was much a uh, scooter is just easier to to drive a ride uh, and with with that in mind uh, it's uh, I've mentioned this before but it's been a long time in Taiwan uh, it used to be I'm not sure about now but it used to be that you need to ride a scooter for like a year before you can apply for a car driver's license but like there's separate licenses. You have a motorcycle license and a car license. And you, and the way it worked in Taiwan was you'd get the motorcycle license first. And then after you've been riding your motorcycle for like a year, then you could go and apply for a car license. And, and it was kind of the same reasoning because a motorcycle is safer and easier than a car. So why would... So in Taiwan, they make everyone start on a motorcycle. There are ways around it, like you can, I think you can go to like driver, driver's ed school and pay something and then you can just go straight to a car license instead of a motorcycle license. But it used to be, and I'm 80% I'm certain that you had to have a motorcycle license for a year before you could apply for a car license. And, the, and the, I think it's pretty logical. Can you imagine if they did that in other places like, like Canada, America? Not only would everybody be better on the roads, everyone would also be more aware of, uh, like that their their awareness of motorcycles and everything would be so much better, It'd be so much safer for everyone in the long run. Well, no, I take that back. It wouldn't be safer for everyone because you'd have a lot of motorcycle deaths because motorcycles are inherently dangerous than cars. You're something like driving from point A to point B, you're like 20 times more likely to die on a motorcycle than you are in a car but you're probably also 20 times more likely to kill someone else in a car than you are than if you're on a motorcycle. So yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> so I, I just think it's interesting. Because like most people would think if you're very tired or drunk and you for some strange reason had to go somewhere that the, the, the obvious choice would be the car. But for me, the obvious choice would be the motorcycle because it's, 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 it's easier and I need less. Less concentration to navigate. But then again, it's, I've, I've been riding, I do 50, I do about 30,000 miles per year every year for the last 15 years. So what is that? That's like 30,000 times 15. That's. For, uh, 450,000 miles I've done in the last uh, 15 years. I thought it was more than that, to be honest. But that's just off the top of my head. All right, uh, that's my video. And that's the topic. Uh, I've been if, uh, support me on Patreon if you want like life updates. There's been a few interesting things that have happened to me recently. Uh, but I, I'm not talking about them on YouTube, so there's a link to it in the description below, Patreon. You can give as little as like a dollar a month, and uh, I'd really appreciate it, especially if you're one of these people that's been watching me for a long time. Every once in a while, I'll get like a fan, sorry, I, I hate that word, I'll get a subscriber that'll like write to me and be like, oh, I've been watching your videos for the last, you know, 12 years, 13 years. I think I've been on YouTube for like 15 years now or something crazy, um, and then they'll say, something something and then I'll be like oh yeah do you watch my patreon videos and they'll be like nope and it's like okay well then you know <laughs> it's, 
it's a it's a like if you really it's it's nice that you like my videos but if, if you really cared you, you would you would watch um, patreon I'm here to swap I'm, I'm at the motorcycle shop I'm here to uh, swap bikes I'm worried I haven't had any tours this year Hi. Love you. I love this dog. Uh, I need an oil change and some other stuff. And I'm gonna swap bikes. So. I'm gonna go in. At the bay. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, check the video description for links to my other stuff. No, it's daddy's talking. No, I'm sorry. You guys speak English if you want me to give it to you. Can you speak English? So say something. That's all Chinese. You fail.